Welcome to our Unitarian Universalist Society Sunday service this morning. We are glad to gather both online and a few of us in person for this service today. As Unitarian Universalists, we don't all believe the same things, but we have shared values that guide our life in the world together. Our UUS mission statement here, one of the things it lists as one of our values is deep connections, nurturing deep connections with one another. So we will be focusing on that in this service as we talk about listening to each other. Welcome to any who are visiting today. We hope you enjoy our service and welcome to everyone, whether in person or on Zoom. And now over to Reverend Diana for our call together. Thank you, Peggy. Good morning, I'm the Reverend Diana Smith, the minister of the Unitarian Universalist Society, and it is wonderful to be with you all this morning. In these times of change, it is so important to be together, to come together as a spiritual community, to gain the sustenance that we each and all need and to help nourish each other. As members of a covenantal faith that expresses our core value of love through how we agree to be together and to support each other, it is good to come together and to affirm that even when we cannot yet all be together in body, this congregation remains strong and connected. To affirm that we have faith and hope in this congregation, in each other, and in the ways we continue to grow together during the challenges of life. And to affirm that wherever any of us is on our life's journey, whether we come to worship with joy in our hearts, weighted with burdens, in need of rest, or searching for others to engage in the struggle with us, we are glad, and this community is glad that we are here. Today, we'll be reflecting on and celebrating the ways that we listen to ourselves, to each other, and the things that we've learned about listening over time. And so, we begin our service today with words from the Reverend Gretchen Haley, who writes, Do not fail to be surprised by the catching of your breath, the quickening of your heart, the fullness of your eyes. Wide and suddenly awake with awe, here is a place filled with wonder, that still there might be something new born today, that we, might be born anew today. Do not fail to notice the changing, the life full and abundant, already beginning by our coming together, already possible by the promises we make to give, to receive, to become more together, and to forgive again and again, the falling short that is always already here. Here we find ourselves among the courageous, feeling ourselves, trying to become brave. With each in and out of breath, each word, each pause, each song, we give thanks to be on this journey, in this faith, together. Come, let us worship together. And so, as we join together, let's sing Wake Now, My Senses, hymn number 298. If you're here in the sanctuary in person, we ask that you just hum along or sing softly into your mask. If you're at home, sing it out loud. Here goes. <laughs>
Awake now my senses and hear the earth call. Feel the deep power of being in all. Keep with the web of creation your vow. Giving, receiving as love shows us how. Wake now my reason, reach out to the new. Join with each pilgrim a quest for the true. Honor the beauty and wisdom of time. Suffer thy limit and praise the sublime. Wake now, compassion, give heed to the cry. Voices of suffering fill the white sky. Take as your neighbor the stranger and friend, praying and striving their hardship to end. Wake now my conscience with justice, my guide. Join with all people whose rights are denied. Take not for granted our privileged place. God's love embraces the whole human race. Wake now my vision of me. in my pathway with radiance here. Mingle my calling with all who will share. Work toward a planet transformed by our Morning. Glad we can all be together today. As Unitarian Universalists, we light a flame within a chalice as a symbol of sanctuary and safety to unite us in our worship and to remind us of our ongoing search for the light of truth. Life is a gift for which we are grateful. We gather in community to celebrate the wonder and mystery of this great gift. So let us now kindle the flame of our liberal religious heritage and renew our covenant of mutual love and care. Love is our doctrine. The quest for truth is our sacrament and service is our prayer to dwell together in peace, to seek knowledge and freedom, and to serve those in need. This we promise, this we covenant with life and one another. Each week, when we light a candle for justice and healing, we hold space for our understanding of interdependence, that our liberation is bound up with every other person's liberation, and our feelings of rage and heartbreak over the ongoing pandemics of illness and racism, the devastation of climate chaos, and the waves of trauma washing over our world. As the pandemic continues to take a terrible toll on people, feeding on divisiveness and systems of oppression that have been allowed to fester, we light this candle to help us hold space together for processing what is happening in our lives and in our world. We light this candle that we may not be numbed to injustice, devastation, illness, and trauma, but rather find strength, courage, and love together to continue engaging 
with the struggles for liberation, justice, and healing. Today, as we light this candle, we are particularly mindful of the unfolding chaos in Afghanistan and here in the U.S. so close to us, in Minnesota, the Line 3 protests where indigenous leaders and their supporters are marching south to Minneapolis in protest today and in the coming days. And so now, let us hold a time of silence to listen to our hearts and bodies, or perhaps to lift up prayers. And now as Alex plays our centering music, please take this time to sink more deeply into the presence of each other. In this time, we invite you into the practice of beholding each other. If you're participating in the service online and you'd like, please feel free to turn your cameras on and spend this time beholding each other's faces. If you're in the sanctuary, Please take this time to behold the reality of each other. And please feel free to use the chat to let us know that your chalice is lit. Good morning. Good morning. Um, if you are joining us via Zoom, please turn your video off right now. The story that I bring to you today is called The Mailman and the Very Big Mailing. And I wrote it myself. Once upon a time, there was a little girl who lived with her grandparents in a small white house in what felt like a very big city. Most of the time there was light in the home that the little girl shared with her grandparents and there was television and music that played from the hi-fi in the living room too. And during these most of times, the sound of music or old time cowboy shows created the background noise for activities like drawing and writing and cooking delicious meals with grandma in the very big kitchen or spending time with grandpa 
puttering with broken electronics that lived on the table that was once the dining room table. And these most of times were both good and memorable. But in the sometimes, the only light in the house came from oil lamps that were scattered throughout the small house that was very hot, even at night. And meals were things that came from the garden and weren't cooked on top of or baked inside the giant gas stove in the very large kitchen. Grandpa didn't putter when the house grew dark, but sometimes filled the house with music from his guitar instead. And grandma kept her hands busy by crocheting or knitting or mending or doing embroidery for friends and neighbors and family. And on these long, hot and dark days, the little girl often became bored with drawing pictures or coloring or writing while at the same time being too hot and too restless to sleep. So grandpa thought and thought and came up with a new game called mail. And the little girl was the most important player because the little girl became the mailman. Grandpa crafted a three corner hat out of newspaper and wrote on one side mailman. And on the other side, he wrote the little girl's name. Sometimes as the house began to grow dark, just before it was time to light the oil lamps, grandpa would proclaim special delivery and the little girl would pick up her first piece of mail that needed to be delivered. Most of the time, mail was only exchanged between grandma and grandpa. But sometimes neighbors would come and play cards with grandpa or pick up things from grandma and sit and set for a while. Grandpa had some rules to the game. The rules were to deliver the mail as quickly as possible, to only say, I have mail for you to the recipients of the mail pieces, to listen to the recipient, whether the recipient spoke with words or with feelings and to always wear her hat when making deliveries. At, At first, first, the little, the little girl, girl didn't quite, quite know what grandpa meant when he told her to listen to feelings. And she wondered how she would be able to hear things, things that, that were felt, felt on, the on the inside, but not heard on the outside. But as she made deliveries to grandma, the little girl noticed that sometimes grandma would make the face that she wore when scolding the little girl. Sometimes grandma would smile a little and shake her head while reading the mail. And sometimes grandma would even get a little weepy. But a lot of times grandma would laugh a lot and the neighbors laughed every time they read grandpa's mail. Grandpa would always stop sending mail throughout the house when the little girl became very sleepy. And at first, the little girl wondered how grandpa knew she was sleepy since she didn't tell him with words. But as the little girl learned how to listen to feelings, she understood that grandpa knew how to listen to feelings too. And he could hear that she was very, very tired. So after the last piece of mail was delivered for the day, grandma would help the little girl wash her face, put on her jammies and tuck her into bed where the little girl would fall asleep and dream about good food from the garden, her family who loved her so, and the feelings she heard throughout the day. So now I would like to take a moment for us to write mail to one another. In this week's church email, there was a note from me asking that you have items handy to be created during today's RE moment. And for the next few minutes, while contemplative music plays, I'd like for you to think about one word that has resonated and created deep feelings for you during this time of pandemic. 
write that one word down and get creative while you reflect, but only use one word. When you are finished, turn the paper with your word face down and don't share your word with your Zoom neighbors just yet. So let's begin. So now for the sharing. If you're comfortable doing so, please turn your camera back on. And at the count of three, hold your paper up to your camera at home to share your word with all of us. If you are at home and aren't able to creatively express your word, please feel free to share your word in the chat box on Zoom. You may find yourself wanting to verbally react to the words that your neighbors have shared with you, but I'm going to ask you to instead try to read your neighbor's feelings in silence during this portion of the activity. You ready? One, two, and three. Thank you for taking this moment to share with all of us. I lead you in this morning's meditation, please remember that this is simply an invitation. If anything feels uncomfortable to you or your body doesn't want to, please don't. This is invitation. And so let us enter into a time of prayer and meditation. As you turn your attention this morning into your body, I invite you to let your attention soften, to just notice what is. Beginning with the lowest part of your body, simply notice what you are connected to. What parts of your body touch the ground 
or the chair or your own other parts of your body. Notice the contact of your body with your chair. What places touch your chair and how do they feel? Are there places you hold tension, places that are relaxed? Notice, don't change your breathing. Simply notice if it's deep or shallow or any way you could describe the rhythm of air in and out of your body. And now, as you continue to notice, turn your attention to the space around you. What senses are connecting you to the world around you? Let your gaze or your ears or your nose or touch softly take in the world. What are you drawn to? Notice the details of what you're sensing. Slowly turn your attention to what else you're drawn to. And now, again, notice your breath. How is your breathing now? How is it the same? How has it changed? invite you to continue with deepening in this meditative space, with listening in these new ways and in these old ways as we hear some meditative music. I need you, you need me, we are a part of one body, stand with me, agree with me, we are a part of one body, it is our will that every You are important to me. I need you to survive. You are important to me. I need you to survive. I need you. You need me. We are a part of one body, stand with me, agree with me, we are a part of one body, 
It is our will that every need be supplied. You are important to me. I need you to survive. You are important to me. I need you to survive. Today's reading is How to Survive the Apocalypse by the Reverend Sean Parker Dennison. Reverend Dennison is the minister of the Rogue Valley Unitarian Universalist Fellowship. Alongside his congregational ministries, Reverend Dennison has served the Unitarian Universalist Association on the Journey Toward Wholeness Transformation Committee, serving on the board of Star King School for the Ministry and co-founding Trust transgender religious professional you use together. He also wrote Breaking in Blessing, a meditation manual from which our reading comes. First, learn to listen, not only for enemies around corners and hidden places, but for the faint footsteps of hope and the whisper of resistance. Hone your skills, Aim your heart toward kindness and stockpile second chances. Under the weight of destruction, we will need the strong shelter of forgiveness and the deeper wells that give the sweet water of welcome. We have a place for you. When the world ends, we must not add destruction to destruction not accept a beggar's bargain to fight death with more death. In order to survive the apocalypse, any apocalypse at all, we have to give up the counterfeit currency of self-sufficiency, the mistaken addiction to competition, the lie that the last to die has somehow survived. past year has been so strange, and I know that that is putting it mildly. At times we've talked about how we're all in it together, and at the same time, we know that we've experienced many different pandemics, that it's been different for so many of us. Today, as people were sharing their words, I was noticing things that have resonated with us, the loneliness, feeling unmoored, uncertain. Also, waiting, finding and striving for patience, compassion, care, 
connection. So many experiences, so many things that we're all experiencing at the same time and separately. So many things we can listen to from each other. And as I witness your words, and as I notice what I am feeling myself, I hear how much meaning-making we have left to do, how much sense-making an understanding of how this has changed us and where it is leading us we have left to do. What a year and what a few months it will mean if we engage in this work, when we engage in this work. And one of the ways that we engage in meaning-making, in understanding how we have changed and what is happening, is by listening to ourselves and to each other. There are many ways of listening. We've explored a few of them today. You probably have your own ideas, your own wisdom that you have grown into over time. Sometimes it's that still, small voice of inner wisdom, of spirit, of something deeper and greater, of something within, of mystery, that comes to us in times of prayer and meditation, or in times of deep closeness with the people we love. Sometimes it's listening to someone we barely know, that we're just beginning to know and finding new wisdom as we hear something that resonates with our heart or that is different than anything we have ever known. As we move into this time of meaning making, of wondering, of finding what is next in our pandemic journey, I invite all of us to notice how we're listening, to deepen in different ways of listening that are perhaps unfamiliar to us, to ask ourselves who and what we're listening to. There is a song I listen to often from Sweet Honey on the Rock about breaths about who we listen to. And it talks about listening more often to things than to beings, which to my ears sometimes sounds very unfamiliar, but also is very familiar because it talks about how the spirits of the ancestors are in the voice of the water in the world around us. And every time I listen to it, it invites me into other ways of listening that I don't think of, that don't come to me naturally. And it invites me to think and to notice more deeply how I listen and what I'm not listening for. Sometimes we think of listening as being a quiet or gentle, a passive exercise, and yet for those of us who've ever listened deeply, we know it is anything but that. There was a meme that a friend posted recently, actually that Reverend Sean Parker Dennison, who wrote today's reading, posted. It was from Lori Heaton, Hattin, and it said, you keep pairing me with quiet, peace said, but my true companion is the mighty clamor of chains being ripped clean from the wall. You keep pairing me with quiet, peace said, but my true companion is the mighty clamor of chains being ripped clean from the wall. What a different way to think of peace than we usually do and listening when we do it well, when we do it deeply, is much the same. 
It invites us not into quiet, not into peace in the placid sense, but into something transformational, into something that challenges our very foundations and transforms our world. And so, as we begin this new school year and move towards the end of another summer, what is it that you need to give up? As Sean Parker Dennison said in his, the reading we heard earlier, what lies about the counterfeit currency of self-sufficiency the mistaken addiction to competition, the lie that the last to die has somehow survived. What lies about that do you need to give up? What do you need to listen to to move more deeply into the reality that we need each other to survive, that each and every one of us needs each other deeply, deeply and truly? to survive. What do you need to give up about how you sit in relationship, in relationship to yourself, to others, to wholeness and to liberation? What do you need to change about how you listen to yourself and to others? And how will listening transform us, leading us further towards the vision of beloved community. I look forward to finding out together, even as I invite you into this work individually. We move into it together. So may it be. Changing gears a little bit this year, as we've continued this congregation's work on listening each other into speech, because that's what we do, and creating space for our many experiences and understandings of the world, and discerning and engaging with what love looks like in public, that is, with justice, We've engaged in new ways with the question of how we further develop this congregation as a radically inclusive, welcoming, supportive, liberatory, love and justice focused congregation. Earlier this year, these questions led us to engage in work with Unitarian Universalist religious educator and leader C.B. Beale. C.B let us in reflecting on how the ways we bear witness to, acknowledge and accept each other's different life experiences can literally save lives. Can literally save lives because that's what deep listening can do. That's part of how it rips those chains from the walls. CB helped us learn about the liberatory framework of preemptive radical inclusion and to begin think, thinking about some ways that we can be a community of fuller welcoming justice and well-being. This year, these questions have also led us to engage with other organizations that are working on developing deeper relationships between congregations and other groups. One of these is the Johnson County Interfaith Coalition a group of congregations united by a passion for justice, commitment to community, and the practice of hope. The Johnson County Interfaith Coalition has helped us learn about and develop the skills to begin doing our first listening campaign at UUS. Because a listening campaign is an opportunity to do just that, to listen. Members of UUS, including some here and many more online, have been trained in ways of listening to get to know other members better, as well as how to listen for people's interests, passions, and motivations to work on certain types of activities, groups, or social justice issues. By listening in these ways, we will be able to grow and deepen our congregational connections with one another and with the wider community. We will learn more about what is important to us, 
and who and what we're called to be in the world as individuals and as a congregation. And so 20 members of UUS have agreed to begin this process here. We hope that this initial group will grow over the next three, over the years, as listening in these ways becomes part of the life of this congregation. So to start this us out, over the next two months, these members of the listening campaign will be calling about 150 to 200 people who are either friends or members of UUS. They will be working on reaching people from a range of backgrounds and types of connections with UUS, particularly voices that aren't heard as often in, the con in congregational leadership and decisions. This is sacred work that touches our deepest values and helps us transform, helps us become more of who we need to be in this world. And so this morning, we're going to commission this group to lead our listening campaign. So listeners, those of you who are here, we either, we come to the front of the sanctuary up here, and if you're at home, will you turn your camera on? Okay. Okay. Great. All right, and we are getting some people on Zoom moved so that everybody can see you, can see the listeners. I'm gonna start off and let's see if we can get, get through everybody, if we've got everybody who's, who's one of our listeners. Well, so we've got Dave Martin and Diane Martin. We've got Diana Henry. We're working on moving everybody else. Got Sarah Ross, Ian Colley, Virginia Melroy, Sue Khan. Am I making this worse for you, Peggy, by saying people's names? <laughs> Peggy is trying to find you right now. Peggy is trying to find you. If you are a listener and you're not showing up yet, Peggy's working on finding you. If you turn your video on, she's, she's going to get you, hopefully. This is part of the wonder and sometimes pain of technology, isn't it? So folks, these are the people who, as I was saying, are the listeners who are gonna be reaching out to 150 to 200 of our members and friends. So, Hmm. Okay. Shall we keep keep going? Okay. So Peggy thinks she has everybody who is present. I'm going to go ahead and read everyone's names who is part of this listening of leading this listening campaign. So we have Sarah Ross, Dave Martin, Diane Martin, Ian Colley, Virginia Melroy, Sue Kahn, Jane DeWitt. Linda Hartford, Peggy Grimmer, Dana Van Abema, Quanda Hood, Susan Salterberg, Jim Olson, Steve Locker, Miriam Kasha, Peg Boska, Joel Gilbertson White, and Peggy Garrigus. We are here today to commission you as listeners, as leaders of UUS's listening campaign and I am grateful for your willingness to serve in your role. Members of the congregation, please read aloud the words that are appearing in the slide or in the chat. I'm not sure where they're going actually, probably in the chat. Um, okay. Today, we call you forth from among us. We place our trust in you, asking you to listen to us to learn about our lives, our passions, our motivations, and our hopes. We ask you to help us deepen our connections and our congregation discern who and what we are called to be in the world. I charge you, the first leaders of UUS's listening campaign, to listen with compassion to your fellow congregants, to care for yourselves and one another, 
to tend the sacred in your encounters, and to ask for help when you need it. May you know that your care is powerful. May you know that I, the leaders of the Johnson County Interfaith Coalition, and the pastoral care team are here to support you. And may you know that you are enough. And now please join me again in saying, as your minister and as your congregation, we now commission you as leaders of our listening campaign. Thank you for all that you give. Amen and blessed be. <laughs> Right, and now Dan, will you lead us into our offering? Thank you, listeners. How we give, what we do with our lives, our time, and our resources is a reflection of our values. In response to the abundance we are blessed with, every week this congregation donates generously to organizations in the community who work, whose work aligns with our values and principles. Our community partner agency this month is the Free Medical Clinic. Close to 300 volunteers from various disciplines, including medical, specialty, dental care, and prescriptions provide thousands of hours of services to the clinic each year, helping to make primary health care possible for those without insurance. On the screen, you will see instructions for how to give online, or you may take this time to write a check and address an envelope to the UUS to put in the mail. You may assist our community partner, contribute to the congregation to provide additional support for our operating expenses, or contribute towards your pledge to our society. The offering is a sign of commitment to this free congregation, which is completely supported by voluntary generosity of all who join with us. As we give and receive the offering, may we be transformed by our giving, and may the world be transformed by our gifts. Now, as we move towards the end of our time together, we know that so much of life, whether it's listening, moving into a new school year, discerning what comes next, or living through a pandemic, is a dance. It's a play back and forth with the music of the universe as we dance with what comes next. And so, if you're here in person, again, I'm gonna invite you to sing or hum quietly into your masks. If you're at home, sing out as loud as you want. And there are few enough in the sanctuary that if you feel the urge, if you feel moved to get up and dance, to let it be a dance, feel free to. If you're at home, go for it. Alex, it's all yours.
Let it be a dance we do. May I have this dance with you through the good times and the bad times too. Let it be a dance. Let a dancing song be heard. Play the music, say the words, and fill the sky with sailing birds. Let it be a dance. Let it be a dance. Let it be a dance. Learn to follow, learn to lead. Feel the rhythm, feel the need. To reap the harvest, plant the seed. Let it be a dance. Let it be a dance we do. May I have this dance with you through the good times and the bad times too. Let it be a dance. Everybody turn and spin. Let your body learn to bend and like a willow with the wind. Let it be a dance. Let it be a dance. Let it be a dance. A child is born, the old must die. A time for joy, a time to cry. Take it as it passes by. Let it be a dance. Let it be a dance we do. May I have this dance with you through the good times and the bad times too. Let it be a dance. Morning star comes out at night. Without the dark, there is no light. If nothing's wrong, then nothing's right. Let it be a dance. Let it be a dance. Let it be a dance. Let the sunshine, let it rain. Share the laughter, bear the pain. And round and round we go again. Let it be a dance. Still kind of dancing. Please join me in the words for extinguishing our chalice. We extinguish this flame, but not the light of true truth, the warmth of community, or the fire of commitment. All these we carry in our dancing hearts and in our minds until we are together again. As you go out into the day and the week ahead, may you listen deeply. May you listen differently. May you love each other. And may you keep dancing in whatever way you will. Go in peace, love, and justice, living love ever more fully and fiercely into the world. Amen and blessed, blessed be.